Now it's time for the second part of the 10th episode of the series. Sorry I can't make an actual and serious timeline of the WWE in 2005, but there will be new rivalries, feuds, stories and pay-per-views on the way at that time. John Cena and Batista were faces of the company as world champions and been drafting to different brands, Lee betrays Matt Hardy for Edge, when Eddie Guerrero fouls to make Rey Mysterio's life miserable, Legend Killer and the Deadman, HBK vs Angle, etc. starting right now. 4. Rey Mysterio vs Eddie Guerrero Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero opened WrestleMania 21 to have a great match and Rey defeated Eddie, and they showed respect after the match. Eddie Guerrero's ego gets into him because he can't beat Rey Mysterio. All of this beginning to disappoint Eddie, there were friendly problems between Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio and Eddie even have car troubles like Zero Traffic. They both dropped the WWE tag titles to the debut and win them on the 296th episode of SmackDown. And then the next week, Rey and Eddie vow to regain the WWE Tag Team Championships and Rey vows to make the tag but Eddie, he won't make the tag because Rey is the problem or he is the victim? He won't make the tag because something changed him, and he watched M&M destroy Rey Mysterio. On the 298th episode of SmackDown, Rey Mysterio in the ring called out Eddie to owe him an explanation. Eddie has nothing to say to Rey, and Rey asks what happened to Brotherhood. He also said, if you don't want to talk, then you'll fight. Later that night, Mysterio meets Eddie Guerrero's nephew, Chavo Guerrero in a street fight. After the match, Chavo and Eminem attacks Rey Mysterio, and out comes Eddie Guerrero, doing the red thing, cleaning house with Eminem, helping out Rey but clothesline and beats the shit out of him and ripping his mask and beat him into a bloody pulp and hits the brain buster on Rey Mysterio on the steel stairs, laying waste to him and stands tall. What you see is one of the greatest heel turns in WWE history. And then, the next week on SmackDown, Eddie cut a sick heel promo on Rey Mysterio with a ripped mask in his hand. That promo was cold and sick. This leads up to their match at Judgment Day. At Judgment Day, Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero had a stiff match until a disqualification occurs. Guerrero destroyed Mysterio with a steel chair leaving him beaten. This rivalry between Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero has been more physical and intense. On the June 23rd episode of SmackDown, Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio was about to close the feud. Guerrero doesn't think Rey would know what he is capable of. These two men had a great match on SmackDown like it's a 5 star match. After Ray beat Eddie once again, Eddie has a smirk look on his face like he's about to make Ray's life more miserable. Speaking of that no good son Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Eddie started this Dominic angle to make Ray's life more miserable, the angle nobody cared about or interested in. That's Eddie's fault it would be memorable in years. He started the angle he loves Dominic. And it makes Ray's life miserable. Eddie Guerrero in 2005 was just insane. Him and Ray would meet once again at the Great American Bash, and Ray beats Eddie again and saves his son from Eddie revealing a secret. Funny how Eddie uses Ray's son as a human shield and he would have lost, if he wouldn't tell Dominic a secret, and guess what, Eddie lied. Eddie even told Dom, Ray Mysterio is not your father, but I am. We all knew Eddie lies, cheats, and steals. He even tries stealing custody of Rey Mysterio's son. Nonetheless, Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio had an amazing ladder match at SummerSlam with the custody of a child. Two months stole the show in a ladder match and Rey Mysterio and Eddie always put in awesome chemistry in matches together and against each other. Fast paced action with ladder spots. In the end, Rey Mysterio wins custody to get his son back to put an end of a rivalry with Eddie Guerrero. 19 years later. Dominic Mysterio betrays his father to become Dirty Dom. 5. Batista vs Triple H At WrestleMania 21, Batista betrays Evolution to dethrone Triple H and ends his reign of terror to capture the World Heavyweight Championship. I'm the man, I'm the predator, I'm the World Heavyweight Champion, and I refuse to be anyone's victim. After WrestleMania, Triple H was furious after losing the World Heavyweight title to Batista and reminds Dave that there is the one thing. Batista, you are on borrowed time, it is the one thing you feared Dave, it is the pedigree, it is the one thing that made me a 10 time world champion, and it will make me an 11 time world champion. At Backlash, 
Triple H gets his rematch against Batista for the World Heavyweight title, but failed to reclaim the championship from him. Eight nights later after Backlash, Batista tells Hunter that he's not good enough to face him for the championship again. This causes Helmsley to quit. Two weeks later on Raw, Batista with Ric Flair as his manager, defended the World Heavyweight Championship against the Rated R Superstar, Edge, and after the match, Triple H appears, Ric Flair low blows Batista, leading Helmsley to bash Batista with a sledgehammer and beat him into a bloody pulp, hits the pedigree on the championship belt to challenge him in a Hell in a Cell match at Vengeance for the World Heavyweight Championship and meet one last time. June 26, 2005, Las Vegas, Nevada, inside Hell in a Cell, Batista defends the World Heavyweight Championship against Triple H, it was physical, brutal, sadistic, and sick. It was a human bloodbath, sledgehammers, barbed wire chairs, stairs, the cell wall was used so many times, Janes, it was a war. These Hell in a Cell matches mean something back when. Carnage, the storytelling, in the end, Batista was the better man, and Triple H was about to bash him with the sledgehammer but didn't, because Batista hits the Batista bomb anyway to retain his title at Vengeance in a physical fight. Four nights later, Batista gets drafted to SmackDown, and speaking of that, 6. Drafting John Cena and Batista to different brands. John Cena has become big match John to become one of the most popular WWE superstars in the world, he traveled all over the world as WWE champion, his music video, Bad Bad Man. John Cena in 2005 was a roller coaster ride. As he and JBL meet in a punishing, sadistic, and physical I quit match for the WWE Championship at Judgment Day, they were mostly wrestling in the ring, punishing outside the ring, belts, chairs, announced tables crashing, two men bleeding like Niagara Falls, fighting at the stage, limousines destroyed, all around the arena, two men pushed each other to the limit in one punishing night. In the end, John Cena made John Bradshaw Layfield say the two words, I quit, to win the match and retain the WWE Championship. On June 6th on an episode of Raw, Chris Jericho presents the highlight reel with a very special guest who is still on SmackDown on a four-week draft lottery, with the very first pick on Raw, come on down. Wait a minute, wait what? It can't be. Is this who I think it is? By God, it's John Cena, John Cena is on Raw. Younger views were jumping for joy, some older views loved it, some older views hated it, no one was safe, it was freaking awesome. And ever since Cena has been drafted to Raw, he has been feuding with guys like Eric Bischoff, who can't stand John Cena as the WWE Champion, tries to screw him out of the title countless times. He had also feuding guys like Christian and Chris Jericho. And of course, Kurt Angle. At Vengeance, John Cena successfully defended the WWE Championship in a triple threat match against Christian and Chris Jericho in his first Raw and Ring pay-per-view match. And then at SummerSlam, he defended the championship against Y2J again, this time in a one-on-one -on -one match in the half of the crowd booed John, rooting for Jericho to destroy Cena and take the championship. Half of the crowd were chanting Let's Go Cena. And the other were chanting Let's Go Jericho. And the next night on Raw, Jericho challenges Cena for the WWE Championship with the loser gets fired. After SummerSlam, and the year fired match, Chris Jericho is fired. Batista on the other hand, on the 306th episode of SmackDown on June 30, 2005, JBL thought he won the inaugural SmackDown Championship in a six-way elimination match. Theodore Long the general manager of SmackDown reveals that Bradshaw is not the SmackDown champion. Instead, he's actually the number one contender, and the latest pick for SmackDown in the 2005 WWE Draft Lottery, the World Heavyweight Champion, Batista. After a brutal Hell in a Cell match against Triple H at Vengeance, Batista gets drafted to SmackDown. Just like Senna on Raw, younger and teen views were jumping for joy, and older views were shocked. If you take a look back at SmackDown from 2005 to 2007, Batista is your guy. Batista would rule SmackDown as the World Heavyweight Champion. He would even be best friends with the late great, recently turned face Eddie Guerrero. Rest in peace, Eddie Guerrero. At SummerSlam, 
Batista destroys JBL in a no-holds-barred match to defend his World Heavyweight title. 7. ECW One Night Stand Yup. The greatest pay-per-view in professional wrestling history. The summer of 2005 was wild and insane. The rise and fall of ECW DVD was released in late 2004 and it was one of my favorite DVDs in the world. This DVD was the reason why WWE wanted ECW to be on WWE.com. I was watching yet another episode of Monday Night Raw until I seen and heard from the commercial and advertisement of ECW One Night Stand. In the actual event, almost every single match was great. Lance Storm vs Chris Jericho, Chris Benoit vs Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio vs Juventud Guerrero, Mike Awesome vs Masato Tanaka, the Dudley Boys vs Tommy Dreamer and the Sandman, heel WWE superstars beginning to war with ECW and shit on their fans. Stone Cold, Steve Austin, etc. The summer of 2005 was insane. What do you think about the WWE in the summer of 2005? What do you think about Batista drafting to SmackDown and John Cena to Raw? Leave the comment below and I'll see you in part 3.